we're going to draw the Lewis structure for CH2Br2, which is dibromomethane. Now, carbon and bromine and hydrogen are all non-metals. So these are going to be covalently bonded together to form a single molecule. It's going to be a molecular compound. Now, the covalent bonds there mean they are sharing electrons. It's not a transfer of electrons like you have in an ionic one. Now, let's figure out how many electrons we're even dealing with here. Carbon in group 14 brings four valence electrons. Hydrogen in group 1 brings one valence electron, but there are two of them in the molecule. So I'm going to multiply that by two and add on bromine in group 17, which brings seven valence electrons, and there's two of them as well. So it's 14 plus 2, which is 16, plus another 4, is 20 electrons total for us to deal with. Now I'm going to put my central atom in the center, and the, the atom here that can make the most bonds is carbon. Generally, hydrogen and bromine prefer to have one bond each. So I'm going to put the carbon in the center, and I'm going to surround it with the two H's and the two BR's. And I'm going to draw single bonds from the C to each of those. That holds them together in a molecule. Each of these single bonds is two electrons. So that's two, four, six, eight electrons that I've already dealt with. Now I need 20. And we're going to have to complete the octets of the outer atoms. Well, not the hydrogens. The hydrogens are happy with just two electrons in their outer shell. So the hydrogens are stable as is. But the bromines need to follow the octet rule here. I have eight electrons total. Here's 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and then 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. That's all 20 electrons that I'm allowed to use drawn here. Luckily, my bromines both have their full octet, and this carbon also has a full octet. I'm done. This is the complete Lewis structure for CH2Br2. I hope it made sense as we drew it together. Thanks for being with me, and best of luck.